Hi, this is Salman Alana and Manos Perlakis, and this is case 204 for the Manual of CTO Interventions. This is a case of the tunnel in landslide or tilt technique for performing the block and deliver function for managing a coronary perforation. The patient presented with angina. He was found to have a CTO of the right coronary artery with related ischemia and was referred for PCI of the right coronary artery current total occlusion. This is the dual injection. He did have a CTO with an ambiguous proximal cap at the takeoff of an acute marginal branch. The occlusion length was relatively long. The distal vessel appeared to be diffusely diseased. And then uh, there appeared to be some uh, collaterals, septal collaterals and epicardial collaterals supplying the PDA. So multiple levels of complexity, including the ambiguity of the proximal cap, the long leisure length diffusely diseased distal vessel. Our initial plan was to try first undergrade, see if we can clarify the proximal cap ambiguity by using various projections. If that didn't work, try retrograde through septals and leave undergrade dissectory entry as the last option because of the small size of the distal vessel. So we tried undergrade with the Turnpike LP and the Filter XTA and Guy NXC, but we were unable to make much progress. We then tried retrograde through the septal collateral, performing both surfing uh, as well as contrast guided. But once again, we were unable to cross into the PDA. And then uh, after multiple attempts, the decision was going to go back to undergrade and do ADR. So we did use uh, a guide extension that provided us a little more support. And then we knuckled a Gladius Mongo guide wire, which, however, seemed to go in an unusual course, more along the side of an acute marginal instead of going down the RCA. This is the RA of you. We can see that it's not uh, moving in the course of the RCA that's supposed to be straight down. So this is a tip injection from the Turnpike LP. And uh, what we're seeing here is that uh, there is a perforation with staining. It's possible that we entered into an acute marginal with a lunkle and then uh, perforated the acute marginal. As expected, there was no effusion on the echocardiogram. We did advance the guide extension further down. The idea was to use the guide extension to tamponade the side of perforation and then advance the knuckle wire. We performed a re-entry attempt using the stingray balloon, but we were unable to get into the true lumen. And uh, a few minutes later, the, pa the patient did develop hypotension, and now he does have a pericardial effusion. We did uh, pericardiocentesis, and uh, um, when uh, we move the guide extension back, we see that there is still a perforation. There is actually likely an intramural hematoma there in the mid-right coronary artery. So we inflated a balloon. And the next step in this uh, essentially large vessel perforation, although it could be a small vessel from a marginal, but uh, the question is how to take care of it. The plan was to deploy a coverage stand, but uh, we wanted to minimize the time that we had flow into the pericardium, so we used uh, two guide catheters in the ping-pong technique. So the original guide catheter was used to have a blocking balloon in the right coronary artery, we brought in a second guide catheter and then use um, um, the, uh, another Mongo wire to advance it further down into the vessel. And then used a balloon over the second guide catheter to advance a guide extension. So now we have the original guide with a balloon and now a second guide along with a guide extension that is being inchwarmed into the vessel. The idea is to provide more support for delivering a papyrus covered stand. But unfortunately, we were unable to deliver the papyrus. It wouldn't go past the mid-right coronary artery. So what we did is we moved the guide extension, the guide liner further down using the inch warming technique. So now we have the guide liner all the way in the mid-RCA. And then over the original guide wire, we were able to pull the balloon back and inflate it. 
So this is what we call the tilt technique, tunnel in landslide. It's a fancy name, but what it essentially means is that we have a guide extension that is going down the vessel, and next to it we have a separate guide wire and a separate balloon that is pushing the guide extension against the vessel wall. In our case, this does two things. One is it provides extra support for delivering a covered stand along the side of perforation. And number two, the inflated balloon prevents blood flow from going downstream and exiting through the side of perforation. This is the so-called block and deliver technique. We are blocking the undergrade flow using this balloon and we're using the guide extension that is essentially being supported. This is an example of another way to say this is power guide extension for delivering the covered stand. And this is what happened. This is the guide extension. This is the blocking balloon over the second guide. And this is the covered stand that uh, was successfully delivered to the mid right coronary artery and uh, deployed across the site of the perforation. We did jail the wire, but we were able to subsequently remove it. And now we did have a successful sealing of the perforation. There's T3 undergrade flow. There's some issue distally. We did the star technique, so the flow is not perfect. But um, we had sealed the perforation and we do have some undergrade flow. There are several lessons from this case. The first one is that uh, even though the knuckle is safer than advancing guide wires that are not knuckled, it, it is not 100%. So in this case, the knuckle likely went into a marginal branch and perforate. So trust the knuckle, but verify. Second, re-entry was challenging. We had diffuse distal disease. So when this is the case, re-entry from the extra plaque into the intra plaque space can be challenging. In this case, we did have a perforation. And we did the assumption that the guide extension would tamponade this side of perforation, but apparently this was not the case, and uh, there was still some extravasation through the site of perforation. So the lesson there is whenever there's a perforation, ensure that there is no continued extravasation when you are using balloons or other techniques to kind of block the blood flow to that area. The next lesson is that cover stents can be difficult to deliver. Although papyrus is much more deliverable than the graft master, it can still be challenging to deliver it in areas of tortuosity or calcium. And then finally, using the tilt technique, the tunnel in landslide technique, allowed us to, number one, block the flow. So we had a guide extension next to it, a balloon. The balloon blocks the flow down to the area of perforation. And the guide extension that is pushed by the balloon has extra support to allow delivery of the PK papyrus then. Thank you.